it has a dated look to it. Uh, I'm going to kill this room because I don't really remember where these last two items are and I want to make sure that we're not molested by she goths while we're looking for them. Uh, I do think this game has a dated look, but I think it has aged gracefully. Like, I would say games like Symphony of the Night have a dated look. You know, you look at Symphony of the Night, it came out in 1997, Sony PlayStation 1. Did you guys even know there was a PlayStation 1? I'll bet you didn't. There's... Ah, oh, there it is. Spider-Ball track. Right in here. Hidden around the corner. But yeah, it's got the, the, like the pixelated graphics, right? But they've aged really gracefully. The pixel graphics in that game look incredible. Even now. Even now that we have HD 2D great games. You know, even now that, like, pixel art is used to purposely create a retro kind of feel. And I think this game has a similar quality. Like, yeah, it's 2002. And the graphics are dated, but they still look so good. There it is, crack wall. Hello there, last item in Fendron Drifts. Alright, now, unless my spreadsheet is a liar, and I don't think it is, because I triple and quadruple and quintuple checked it to make sure I didn't miss anything. Unless my spreadsheet is a terrible liar, we should be done with Fendrana Drifts forever, which means we're going back to Magmore now. Woot! We're gonna clean up Magmore. Just before I bailed on the, uh... Pokemon Emerald run that I didn't want to watch, I told my Twitch guys, hey, if you want to watch something less boring, and I linked the spreadsheet that I'm using to keep track of my progress through Metroid Prime, so you guys can look and see what I'm doing instead. And like four people are watching it <laughs> right now, anonymously logged into the Google spreadsheet. Alright. Magmore. Three items to still to pick up in Magmore. And they should all be just... Uh, right on our way, I think. I think all three of them are just right on our way. I'm going to double check the map here. And please forgive me. I've tried to do good and not check the map constantly. Uh, we need to go here to the Triclops pit and then make our way back to... Back to this elevator here. Cool beans, sucker. And that's it for Fendrana. No more Fendrana drifts. Uh, I think the music in Fendrana Drifts is one of the best aspects to it. That that just very serene sounding, uh, kind of like crystalline music almost. And then the how they remix it later on in the more like action oriented parts when you get to the edge of Fendrana, and it's all ice and you're fighting the the, the space pirates there. Uh, I think those my two favorite tracks of the game are the two. Fendrana Drifts tracks. You need to get wrecked. I need to get lavaed. Apparently. Anybody else in this house? Yes. I need to go over... You know, I'm going to see if there's a little bit of health in here, actually. A little bit. And invisible platform. There we go. So again, we could have collected this item uh, earlier. You don't need the X-ray scope to jump to those platforms. And I'm sure with practice, it's actually not even that difficult to uh, memorize their location. I'm certain it's not that difficult, but I've just never done it. I've never gotten that crazy at the game to want to do that. As much as I love this game, because it's kind of it's, it is kind of a long game, even if you know exactly what you're doing and where you're going, it can still be uh, a time investment. So it's not one that I picked up very often over the years. I played through it three or four times when it was new. I uh, did the 100% run, 
worked. It got all the scans and all the stuff, you know. But I also did a hard mode run, actually. It's one of the few Metroid games I've actually completed the hard mode run. Which is not fun. I don't think that hard mode on Metroid... I mean, it's almost never fun. I think ZM is the worst. ZM has the worst hard mode that I've played. Fusion might be worse. I will be honest, I've never played Fusion on hard. Uh, I despise Metroid Fusion. Hi, if this is your first Brick Road video that you've ever watched in your life, Metroid Fusion is a garbage game. And it's terrible. And I'm not going to go into why. I'm not going to... I don't feel like I... Uh, really want to go on that tirade right now, but just in case this is the first Brick Road video you've ever clicked, you should just know that I am not the world's biggest Metroid Fusion fan. Or the biggest hard mode fan. All the missiles, yeah, thanks. I got 162 missiles. That's what I need, is more missiles, basically. <laughs> We're going back into this room. This is where we got one of our earliest artifacts, actually. This is, uh, Usually, artifacts are hidden pretty close to another pickup of some other kind. And usually you can get the pickup, but not the artifact. This area is exactly the opposite. You can get the artifacts early on, but not the pickup. So you gotta go back later and get the pickup. What? You sure do. So we'll blow this hole open here. Roll down in. There's another power bomb. Now we get to do one of my favorite little throwbacks in this game. Uh, we can just leave from here, can't we? There's a way to just leave from this area. Maybe? It's gonna dump us back out the bottom. Yeah, there we go, okay. My fun little throwback. We got this glass tube we've passed through several times, and once again, if you blow it apart with a power bomb, just like in Super Metroid, it gets destroyed, and you find lava. And also the ice crater. This is, first of all, it's the final item to pick up in Magmore Caverns. We are done here now. And second of all, it is the ice beam combo. It uses a bunch of missiles, and it basically freezes everything in the universe. It has an enormous spread, and it's very useful in one boss fight. Now, we need to keep continue this way and make our way to Talon. Is correct. Uh, unlike Fendrana Drifts, we're not quite done with Magmore yet. There, we will make one more trip to Magmore before all is said and done, but we do have all the items here. Uh, we are going to blow apart some boxes. Hi, you're weak to fire. That doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. I, I really do think that some of the enemies in Magmore, at least the ones that are like literally made out of lava, should be immune to the plasma beam. But I'm going to kill you too. It's just, it's fun. I'm sorry. It's just, I enjoy it. It's entertainment for me. Are you not entertained? Alright, here we are in Talon. We're gonna head on back up. Uh, a couple more items to get in Talon. The elevator should take us right where we want to go, I think. We're gonna double check. I think it does. Yeah, it's gonna take us right where we wanna go. I don't need to double check anything. I'm fine. We're good. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I'll know immediately without having to check the map. Because there is a, uh, there's a dead giveaway if this is the room. And if it's not, I know which room it is. But I think it's right here. Otherwise, I wouldn't have structured the spreadsheet this way. We would have gotten these items earlier in a different part of this uh, cleanup session. Yeah, because this room has a red door all the way at the top of it, which is a plasma beam door. Which, if this is your first time you're playing casually, will have been taunting you the entire game. I'm pretty sure this is the first place I came when I got my plasma beam the first time I played this game. Just because that red door was so in my face the entire game. So we actually get to climb this room now. I mean, we couldn't climb it before anyway. We didn't have the grappling beam. But... In fact, I, I think 
what I did was I'm like, oh, I know there's a grapple point there, but there's no point in going to the grapple point because we don't have the plasma beam yet. Except I didn't know it was the plasma beam. I just knew it was the red beam. Actually, I might have known plasma beam. I, I, I might have guessed it. I'll say that. It's hidden platforms. Again. Okay. Why am I up here? That's an excellent question. Oh, more platforms, that's why. I know why I'm up here, because there's two rooms off of this cave. Not two rooms, but two items. Yeah, there's one. We'll get that first. And we'll spin around. We'll make sure not to miss this platform. Where's my red door? Uh, let's use the thermal visor to find the door, actually. That's probably it there. No, that's a blue door. It's way at the bottom. Red door's gonna be over here. Okay, so we can jump to this platform. Sh oh, it's above us. Wait. We didn't go high enough, apparently. Or we jumped past it. We probably just jumped past it, because we're awesome. Awesome at this game. Look what I did! Uh, we didn't fall too far, though. Yep. Falling off ledges! I think they did a pretty good job with the platforming in this game, but it's not perfect. Not being able to see where your feet are at any particular time does make the game... Oh, it's up there. Ah, we jumped from this platform. In one direction is our missile, in the other direction is our ledge. It was literally right in front of us the whole time. That should be our final missile expansion in Talon. Uh, it is kind of frustrating sometimes when you slip off a ledge when you're trying to, like... Like, if you're standing on the very edge of a ledge and you don't realize you're standing on the very edge of a ledge because it's friggin' first person... And as a result, when you're like turning in place to aim at something or to get a good look at something else, uh, it's not the way we want to go. We got to climb a little bit to get out of here. We're heading back to Chozo. Yeah, when you fall off a ledge because you're trying to turn in place, and just the turning was enough to send you over the edge, it does get a little frustrating. I don't. I think there are solutions to that problem. I don't think I could float any, though, because I'm, again, not a game designer. Uh, I don't know that I've played a first-person game that does really get the platforming aspects done really well. I know that this game, I will say, I think this game does them better than Metroid Prime 2 and 3. I mean, the platforming in this game, I would give them like a 6 or a 7 out of 10, perhaps. And... Let me think. Is this where we... You know what? Both of the elevators in Chozo connect pretty quickly to the main plaza area of Chozo. Which is where we want to be. Chozo is the section, believe it or not, that I know the least well. Because you do most of it your first pass through and it's so fragmented yeah this is the main entrance okay yeah this is what we want so this is where we'll be getting our one and only scan of this entire debacle I'm gonna go with debacle for this recording session we're gonna call this a debacle there's been a gray room back here ever since we hit the map point, and maybe it's been driving some of you crazy. We're finally gonna go through it. Finally gonna go through it after all this time. Lots of the stuff we can get here now are things we could have gotten uh, with power bombs. Like we could have done a lot of this cleanup earlier, but some of it we couldn't have because some of them. requires the plasma beam. There's one... Actually, there's only one item in this entire area that requires the plasma beam. I just didn't want to backtrack twice in the end of the game. But this point requires the grapple beam. Abuya. Abuya. Blow the wall up. 
farewell wall. Hello, final scan. And hello, power bomb pickup. So when I was routing the game, putting together the spreadsheet, I missed one item at the end. I had 99% items. And the reason is because this item here that can literally only be found by listening to the buzz. Can you hear the buzz? Listen, listen. Where is it? I mean, there's nothing to scan here. You can't see through any with the x-ray. No thermal. It's this bush here. You just roll through the bush. Is that a fair item? I think it's fair. I think other people might disagree. There are Chozo Ghosts here. Indeed. Ooh. Alright, there we go. Ah, hello! I mean, you're really close there, man. Sorry, I panicked. I panicked and wasted a super missile. We're gonna get him, though. There you go. Good night, my friend. You can see our next uh, item is an energy tank. It's right nearby. How do we get it? I did scan power bombs, yes? Ah, cool. I did. One last boost ball puzzle, you know, for the road. We haven't done a boost ball puzzle in a little while. Time to do one more. Well, cocked that up. Try <laughs> Why am I laying bombs instead of boosting? There we go. There we go. I guess we go in there first, huh? Maybe this is the thing we do first? Nope, that's just the exit. We don't want to go through the exit yet. Not just yet. There we go. Start the timer again, Harvey. Harvey's in charge of the timer. He's kind of a dingus. Mm, sorry, I needed a drink. I hope Harvey isn't too mad at me there for uh, staying on top of the spider ball track while I was drinking. Shout out to Jordy Bear for sponsoring this video and to everybody who helps make my channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.